Colistermine is one of the medication which is a bile acid binding resin. This is available as a resin polymer which forms a complex with bile acids thereby it can reduce the serum LDL cholesterol levels. When the levels of LDL cholesterol are elevated it may lead to one of the condition atherosclerosis. It is a narrowing of blood vessels due to formation of atheromatous plaque within the intima of the blood vessels. This may reduce the blood flow and increase the risk of stroke in the people. Even though not severe but still triglycerides can also impact the risk of stroke when they are excessively elevated. Few of the coexisting risk factors can also induce the formation of atherosclerosis. In people with diabetes, chronic alcoholism, nephrotic syndrome and obstructive liver disease, cholesterol levels may be elevated that increase the risk of atherosclerosis. In such people, control of cholesterol is highly essential. This can be achieved by well-known medications like statins such as etorvastatin, pravastatin and many more. Similarly, another category of drugs are acting on the bile acids. There are of two types, bile acid binding resins like cholestyramine and cholestipol and bile acid absorption inhibitors like azetamide. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about this cholesteramine. This cholesteramine is available in the form of sachets as a powder and it is suitable for oral suspension. In the form of powder, it forms a water soluble resin, but whenever it interacts with the bile acids, it forms an insoluble complex. So today in this video, we are going to discuss about this cholesteramine, how this drug acts, what is its effect on gastric absorption, what are the important side effects, how they are managed, what is the doses, all these things we will discuss in this video. Where is it used? Cholesteramine is particularly used in the treatment of primary hypercholesterolemia. This is a condition of elevated LDL cholesterol that increases the risk of stroke in the people. A mild elevation of LDL cholesterol can be controlled by dietary modifications. However, when they are significantly elevated, medications like cholesteramine can be used to reduce LDL cholesterol levels. However, cholesteramine is not suitable in the type 3 dyslipidemia. It is a condition which is associated with elevated triglyceride levels. In such cases, triglyceride levels may be elevated above 300 mg per deciliter. Cholesteramine is not suitable for treating such conditions. Even during the therapy with cholesteramine, the triglyceride levels and lipid levels should be monitored thoroughly. And when these triglyceride levels are in between 250 to 299 milligrams per deciliter, caution should be taken as cholesteramine is not affecting triglyceride levels significantly. And even the monotherapy is not suggested to control these triglyceride levels. Normally, bile acids are responsible for digestion of fats. However, when they are excessively elevated, they may be deposited into the cells of the skin that can lead to the one of the condition pruritus. So they can form severe itching in the people. Since cholesteramine can increase the excretion of bile acids, it can be used to treat pruritus where it reduces the itching in the people. So these are the two important indications of cholesteramine. Now let us see how it works. Cholesteramine interacts with bile acids. Bile acids are negatively charged compounds. They form salts with sodium or potassium. On the other hand, cholesteramine is a positively charged resin polymer. So it can interact with bile acids and form a complex. This complex is insoluble, therefore it is not absorbed readily. Therefore, in presence of cholestermine, bile acids are excreted into the fishes. However, in the body, cholesterol acts as a precursor for synthesis of bile acids. These bile acids are secreted into the intestine through the biliary secretion, where they are responsible for digestion of fats in the diet. Normally, these bile acids are again absorbed through enterohepatic circulation. However, in presence of cholestermine, they form an insoluble complex which is not suitable for absorption through enterohepatic circulation. This results in the increased excretion of bile acids which reduce their levels in the systemic circulation. As the bile acid levels are decreased, cholesterol is more converted into bile acids that results in the decreased LDL cholesterol levels. In this way, cholesteramine can reduce serum LDL cholesterol levels by increasing the bile acid excretion through the fascias. 
interestingly a small amount of cholesterol is elevated in the liver however the serum ldl cholesterols are reduced which reduce the risk of atherosclerosis effect on gastric absorption just we have seen that cholestyramine is a resin which can form complex with lipid compounds which are not absorbable therefore it remains in the intestine for longer periods which may impact the GI motility particularly use of cholestyramine for longer periods can produce constipation in the people that's why people are suggested to take more amount of fluids and fiber rich food in order to relieve the symptoms of constipation however in people with pre-existing constipation this cholestyramine should be carefully used because this can further reduce the GI motility inducing troubles in defecation that's why cholestyramine should be used at low dose and it should be started at 4 grams given once daily. After few days of the therapy, the dose can be slowly increased such that it can be given as 4 grams twice daily. However, in people with coronary artery disease, cholestyramine should be carefully used as the constipation may be more pronounced. Similarly, cholestyramine can reduce the absorption of fat soluble compounds as well as vitamins. So it can reduce the absorption of vitamin A, D, E and K. Particularly the reduction in vitamin K absorption may result in vitamin K deficiency. This can be achieved with long term use of cholesteramine that leads to one condition hypoprothrombinemia. It is a condition of decreased prothrombin levels that results in the increased risk of bleeding. In such people the risk of bleeding can be reversed by administration of vitamin K through the parental role. Even the bleeding can be prevented by administration of oral vitamin K supplements while using cholestermine for longer periods. In few of the people, cholestermine can also induce folate deficiency requiring folic acid supplements. And the effect of cholestermine is on the chloride ions. This compound acts as anion exchange resin. Since it is positively charged, it can form a salt with chloride ions. These chloride ions are freely available for exchange with other negative ions. So they can be exchanged for bicarbonate anions. Therefore, chloride ions are more absorbed into the systemic circulation, resulting in one of the condition hyperchloremic acidosis. This may result in induction of nausea and fatigue in the people. Similarly, spinolactone can also interact with cholestermine. Spinolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic which can increase the diuresis but it reduces the potassium excretion. When it is combined with cholestermine, the metabolic acidosis is more pronounced and it may also lead to the development of hyperkalemia. That's why along with spinolactone, cholestermine should be carefully used. Cholestermine can also affect the absorption of so many types of lipid soluble drugs as well as ionic acids. For instance, it can reduce the absorption of drugs like desoxin, warfarin, penicillins, tetracyclines and beta blockers like propranolol. Therefore, these drugs should not be administered simultaneously with cholestermine in order to avoid this interaction. They can be given one hour before or four to six hours after the administration of cholestermine. Another effect of cholestermine is on the calcium excretion. This medication can increase the calcium excretion which may cause weakening of the bones. That's why in long term therapy, the bone strength may be decreased with cholestermine. And in the people with renal insufficiency or volume depletion, this cholestermine should be carefully used as it increases the chloride levels in the body. And in such people, chloride intake should be avoided in order to minimize hyperchloremic acidosis. Now let us see the side effects of this medication. One of the important side effects of cholestermine is the constipation. This constipation is related with the dose and particularly observed with higher doses. Even it is more pronounced in the elders. Other side effects like nausea, abdominal discomfort, flatulence and belching can also be observed. Loss of appetite is another important effect since cholestermine is a resin. It can occupy a bulk volume in the GI tract which results in loss of appetite. Other side effects like rashes and skin irritation are also observed with cholestermine. Now what is the dosage of this medication? Cholestermine is available as powder for oral suspension and each sachet contains a cholestermine at 4 gram strength. The initial dose of cholestermine is given as 4 grams either once or twice daily. In people who are having more constipation, it should be started as once daily. However, the maintenance dose is variable from 8 grams to 16 grams per day 
given as divided doses. So that's all about this medication cholesteramine which is a bile acid binding resin which can be used to reduce serum LDL cholesterol levels in people with risk of atherosclerosis. Along with diet control, cholesteramine can be used in such people. This drug is also used for treating pruritus associated with elevated levels of bile acids. Constipation and abdominal discomfort are the important side effects produced by this medication. It also reduces the absorption of vitamin K that may increase the risk of bleeding and cholesterol can reduce the absorption of few of the other medications like digoxin and warfarin. However, this interaction can be eliminated by taking these medications one hour before, four hours after administration of cholesterol. So that's for today. I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.